Over the last 11 days, Hazrimam has presided over the completion ceremony of the Humayun tomb in Delhi, the inauguration of the Aga Khan Academy in Hyderabad, visited several AKDN sites, and had meetings with state and central government officials and ministers. In addition, Khudavan most generously and mercifully completed the new cycle of Jamati work for Western India, spending the largest part of his time with us, his spiritual children, for which we are eternally grateful. In India, the Jamaat has come a long way. From the early days when we were struggling to achieve even basic quality of life, you have led the way and brought us far, far beyond what we could possibly imagine. Through your emphasis on building strong, world-class institutions with best practice. Khudavin, as a humble token of our love and devotion to our beloved Imam, we seek permission to present Khudavin a small memento from the Indian Jamaat. This late 18th century bronze incense burner resemble a miniature Islamic building of the Mughal period. Thank you. President and leaders of the Jamaat, I've often said that it's the Imam's role to spoil the Jamaat, not the other way around. So if you're happy, as I am happy with the days that we spent together, then I have fulfilled my role, which is to bring happiness to my Jamaat. And I want to thank you for 11 magnificent days in India, for the very kind words of the President, for the wonderful music that we heard, for the wonderful organization of the Jamaat, but perhaps more important than all of that is that this has been, for me, a visit of newly opened doors. And that's very important because it says to me that the Jamaat in India has a future which we can recognize, which we can identify, which we can work towards, and there is a logical, clear road ahead. In 1957, many of the countries where the Jamaat lived were colonies. But I was always concerned about the volatility of the countries in which the Jamaat was living. And I always felt that somehow we had to create a network of institutions around the developing world. And this meant building a number of, un of institutions covering essentially civil society so that men and women could live with some confidence that if things went wrong in a given area, there was nonetheless the institutional capacity to address the issues. And that is why I have spent time on education, on health care, on building economic institutions, on trying to achieve global standards of quality so that the Jamaat does not feel in the developing world that because it lives in the developing world, it is being shortcut on global standards of performance. The second aspect of this visit is my admiration for the way you have organized this visit. And I want to compliment all the leaders of the Jamaat 
present, not present, those who have established leadership traditions, organizational traditions, which have made it possible for me to have 11 days of enormous happiness with my Jamaat in India. And finally, to express to you my gratitude for that lovely gift that you have given me. As you know, I attach great importance to Indian history and to the great caliphates, the great empires of the Muslim world, because I believe there's always something to learn. The past is a place to learn, even if the future is different. And this is why I have spent considerable time in trying to enhance in India the Mughal history and to learn how the Mughals achieved global leadership. Lastly, I say to my leaders and all the Murids who are here, it's been an enormously happy visit. And I hope you will recognize from my own personal joy the confidence that I have as we build for the future. It is very exciting indeed and on my radar screen India is in the countries of greatest opportunity for the Jamaat. Thank you. Oh, 
Oh, oh, oh. 